Hi, and welcome to Teams App Camp. I'm Bob German. In this video, I'll walk you through Lab A02, in which you will extend a simple SaaS application to become a personal tab in Microsoft Teams, complete with Azure AD single sign-on. If you've completed Lab A01, then you can do the lab along with me. Just navigate to aka.ms slash app dash camp and scroll down to the link for Lab A02 Create a Teams app with Azure AD single sign-on. In this first exercise, we'll authorize Microsoft Teams to log users in to your application. This is basically setting up the Azure Active Directory ability for Teams to do single sign-on. So you can follow the link right in the instructions to go back to the Azure Active Directory portal. And from here, we want to return to that same app registration that we created in the previous lab and go into the expose an API section of that application. And here's the API that we exposed uh, for incoming calls. What we're going to do is authorize teams to um, issue tokens that call that API on behalf of our application. And to do that, you need to copy uh, two globally unique IDs, two magical special GUIDs. Uh, this one is for the Teams client application, and the other one is for the Teams web-based application. And both of those are gonna get authorized uh, to issue tokens for this API that you um, had exposed earlier. So. Uh, just make sure that the GUID is well formed and make sure you check off the checkbox to uh, allow that particular scope to be issued. In this next exercise, uh, we're going to create the Teams application package. Now recall that your application isn't actually going to run in Teams, it's just going to appear in Teams. So in order for that to work, we have to tell Teams where it can find your application on the web. To do that, uh, we need to create an app manifest and put that inside of a zip file, which is the application package that gets installed into Microsoft Teams. So the best way to do this is to just go to a finished copy of the manifest folder, because inside there, there's some scripts, which will generate all this for us. So um, just going to go to the solution folder for lab a02 and copy the manifest folder and then i'll go back to my working folder where i'm doing the actual lab work and paste that in and now if we go and look at the files you'll see that we have this manifest folder and inside of there is a json file which is a template for the manifest so a script is going to fill that in based on values that are in our environment file. So for example, it's going to set up static tabs pointing to our um, web page and some web application info that is used for single sign-on. So we're missing one environment variable that will be needed to fill in that template, and that is the Teams app ID. So we'll add that in, and you can copy that right out of the instructions. And that uniquely identifies the app to Microsoft Teams, uh, as opposed to the client ID, which is uh, used to identify it by Azure AD. So now let's go and install the uh, zip package so that we can zip up the result and uh, in our little script. And we're going to add that script. Well, the script was in the manifest folder when we copied it. So we just have to tell the node package manager about that script. So um, you're going to edit your package.json file and add that script right in. And there we go. And now we can run the script. And what that will do is it will take the values out of the environment file, put them into a manifest.json file, and then add that to a zip archive along with the icons for this application. So here you can see that manifest.json has the host name and other values filled in and that we have created the zip file. So 
So in this next exercise, uh, we're going to modify the application code to detect that it's running inside of Microsoft Teams, and then to um, use Azure Active Directory single sign-on instead of the mCell library to log users in to Azure AD. So to start, we're going to copy this uh, piece of code, which is um, going to go into a new module. So on the client side, open up modules and create a new file called teamshelpers.js and just paste that file, that code right in there. So this code, first of all, has a function called ensure teams client initialized. And that handles the fact that you always have to call initialize exactly once. And so we're caching the promise actually, so that it will only get called once, even as multiple web components call it and just initialize the Teams API, as you can see on line seven. Then there's an in Teams function that will determine whether or not our code is running inside of Teams. And it does that by getting the Teams context uh, or failing to get the Teams context if it's not running in Teams. Okay, so now that we have our helper functions all set up, let's go ahead and put them to use. So the first thing we'll do is update the login code so that it uses Teams SSO when we're in Teams. So I'll copy those import statements and put them uh, right near the top of the identity client JavaScript. And so now I'll have the Teams SDK and also my helper functions available to me inside of there. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit more code, which is just gonna say, look, if we're in Teams, skip the MSAL stuff and instead just call the SDK to get the access token. So um, that's down here and it's it's listed in the, in the instructions, but um, when we finally get the access token here in um, get access token two, um, we're gonna do that check. And then I just have to kind of clean up my uh, braces and I love this uh, just format document feature, which leaves everything in, in uh, looking properly indented. Okay, so now we're going to um, go ahead and also augment the log off code. And um, there's not as much to do here, but I'm just going to disable it because uh, you're really logged in to Teams now. So uh, the log off doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So this new version of the function uh, will only log you off if you are in Teams. Okay. So the last thing to do is to hide the navigation um, because Teams is going to provide tab navigation. So I'm going to grab an import statement again and this time go to a web component, uh, which is the navigation component. And I'll just import um, the in Teams function so that I can tell whether or not I'm running in Teams. And then I'm just going to make a little change here um, so that it will call and check if we're in Teams and it won't render anything if, uh, if we're inside of Teams. So I'll make that change here. And okay, that should about do it for the code changes. All right, so the big moment has come when we're actually gonna run our application inside of Microsoft Teams. So to do that, I'm going to type npm start to start up the web server. And so that's going to go ahead and run as before on 3978. And now I can come into Microsoft Teams and we already have the app package. So with the web server running, I should be able to upload the app package and access the application. So to do that, I'll go into applications and there's a manage your apps button in the lower left corner. And from here I can upload an app and that works because I had previously enabled that policy. So uh, upload the app here and I need to go find that zip file in my working directory. So manifest northwind.zip, there it is. And we can upload that and it'll come up with some information about our application and uh, that all came out of the manifest and now i can 
click add to uh to display the application and oh no well now you get to see what happens if you forget to start ngrok right so i got a little tunneling message so let me start ngrok after all and as i mentioned i've um, switched over to using my custom subdomain so that i don't have to change the app registration every time i run ngrok and so now everything should be aligned notice that there's a little refresh button up here in teams that just refreshes your your app and there we go um, this is now fully functional i was logged in uh, without any interruption at all and instead of navigating via the um, nav bar in the app i can navigate using the tabs in microsoft teams notice also that i can go back to my original application and it still works as before. So that's an important goal of AppCamp is that uh, you should be able to extend your app into Teams without breaking it. So we endeavor to always have, keep the original application working at the end of each lab. I hope this video makes it easier for you to complete your journey through Teams AppCamp. Once you've completed the core labs, you can go on to the extended labs and add advanced features to your application. So thanks for watching, and I wish you smooth sailing as you complete the lab.